but we begin this hour with Rudy Giuliani. Federal agents yesterday raiding the apartment of the former New York City mayor, former U.S. attorney and former Trump attorney. They seized computers and cell phones as part of the Justice Department's investigation into Giuliani's business dealings. He has been the focus of a long-running investigation concerning his activities in Ukraine. That includes whether he conducted illegal lobbying for Ukrainian officials during President Trump's years in office. Also, he is accused of trying to damage then-rival Joe Biden on behalf of President Trump. Giuliani, of course, has not been charged, and he has denied any wrongdoing. And we are joined now by Andrew Giuliani, of course, the, the mayor's son. Uh, he spoke to reporters as well yesterday after the raid. We'll talk to Andrew in a second, but here's what he said yesterday. This is disgusting. This is absolutely absurd. And it's the continued politicization of the Justice Department that we have seen. And it has to stop. If this can happen to the former president's lawyer, this can happen to any American. Enough is enough. Joining us now is a former special assistant to President Trump and our friend Andrew Giuliani. Andrew, great to see you. John, great to see you, too. I apologize for this. We're just traveling around New York State, and that's why that's why we're in the car right now. And it's pouring outside, so there's nowhere to go outside. Well, look, you know, I know you, you, you're out there working on this issue. There was also some discussion about you running for governor. It's interesting to see the FBI raiding the apartment of America's yeah. mayor while we have the current governor of New York walking around with impunity after being accused of killing thousands of New York seniors and groping uh, multiple women. Uh, <laughs> but this is where the priority of the FBI is. Uh, but yeah. tell us, Andrew, what actually happened yesterday. It's my understanding that this, obviously, conversation had been going on for a long time. Uh, your dad had been fully cooperating with the FBI. Why did they feel the need to knock down the door and come raid the apartment? Well, I think it's pretty obvious, right? He had been cooperating with the FBI and answering whatever questions they may have had. And I think they need to change a news cycle, right? You had John Kerry, who had his issues. You had Joe Biden, who they couldn't rely on to be able to get through his address last night. So I look at this as completely political. I think they're very worried about what, what my father has on Hunter Biden's laptop. And when you asked what actually happened yesterday, well, they came in to seize devices, right? The one device, the one that they did not seize was Joe Biden's laptop. That's the only one. Hunter yeah. Biden's laptop is the only one that they did not seize. Why did they do it? I just wonder why. I wonder why. I, I mean, you know, again, I'm trying to think of this, too. A reason why? Maybe they already have it. I don't know. I mean, we do know that Hunter Biden is under a criminal investigation as well into his tax issues. Uh, but it, is, it does, you know, it's a head scratcher, Andrew. Why? They would be so concerned about everything else besides the copy of Hunter Biden's laptop. Uh, you know, I, I really think this is just politically motivated. You know, why wouldn't why aren't they interested in James Clapper lying to Congress about the National Security Association, the NSA? Why aren't they concerned about John Brennan lying to Congress, both under penalty of perjury? about the CIA and their spying. They treat people associated with Donald Trump much differently than they treat Democrats. It's that simple. And if the American people can't see it by now, I don't know what else they need to do to open their eyes. Yeah. So as I said yesterday, enough is enough. If this can happen to the president's, the former president's lawyer, John, it can happen to you. It can happen to me. It can happen to any of Newsmax's wonderful viewers. And we need to stop this because before this truly becomes like a red army, more or less. Yeah. You know, well, we're not when, there when yet. You, Andrew, when you well, hear about reports, when you hear about reports of Rudy Giuliani's apartment being raided by the FBI while we're watching American cities be burned to the ground, uh, doesn't seem to be a big concern to the FBI and those things. It, it just doesn't feel yeah. like this is America to a lot of people anymore. I want to expand out the conversation now and welcome in former New York City Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick, who also, of course, served under Rudy Giuliani, and our friend, former U.S. Attorney and the founder of the Tolman Group, Brett Tolman, as well, to talk a little bit about this. Bernie, I know uh, you tweeted out uh, almost immediately after this happened yesterday, you called this thuggery by the FBI. Talk to us about that. Well, listen, I think there's a couple of issues that people have to realize. First and foremost, that the mayor and his attorney, Bob Costello, uh, made several attempts over the last year, year and a half, to communicate with the FBI and cooperate any way they could. <clears throat> so the FBI could have subpoenaed anything they wanted. They didn't have to do a search warrant. 
Second thing is the laptop uh, from hell, uh, Hunter Biden's laptop. The mayor made three attempts to give it to him. He even told them what was on it. Mm -hmm. Child porn, uh, SEC violations, three different FARA violations, and criminal conduct between Hunter Biden and the president of the United States today, and they refused. The electronic devices was on that search warrant. They should have taken it, and Brett can talk more on this. The last thing is the attorney-client privilege. Right. The, the, the mayor was the personal attorney for the president for two years. <clears throat> Everything he communicated to the legal defense team for the president is on those devices. They should not have been taken. And if I was the president today, I'd be in court invoking my privilege to get those things seized from the FBI and put away. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's I'm a little surprised there is not an injunction or a demand uh, for an injunction right now, Brett. But talk a little bit more about what Bernie was saying there, the legal aspects of this. I mean, the, the attorney client privilege is sacrosanct in this country and it is, is a cornerstone of having a real functioning judicial process in this country. And it does seem like that's what they're after here, those privileged communications. Yeah, John, I'll tell you, I, I appreciate you going into some of the weeds on this. One thing that uh, it, we're starting to learn, you know, more and more about the search warrant, but it's my understanding, and this should trouble everyone, that there was at least a, a, an attempt, possibly two attempts to get this search warrant previously, and they were denied by the Department of Justice. Uh, as soon as the new administration comes in, lo and behold, they're able to get a search warrant and they go in and they, they raid the office of the former U.S. attorney. So the, the very office that he was in charge of, uh, they, they now are, instead of granting him the courtesy or listening to their uh, you know, request to cooperate, to turn over information, they instead do what they know will get publicity. Mm -hmm. And and that that is taking the Department of Justice to a political level that's that's unfortunate. Now keep in mind, John, they they knew going into this there would be a lot of information they would find that is privileged. Right. Uh, whether that's the executive privilege or whether it's the attorney client privileged. And so what do they have to do? They now have to assemble a taint team to actually review everything and and, and they'll have to do that over months, if not longer. Um, so they'll they'll be able to utilize this as a talking point and a uh, you know a leverage point uh, in the months to come. And you can imagine what's going to happen here. The leaks are going to start coming out, unverified, undocumented reports of what's in and on this computer. And of course, the media will run with it without any real verification. What we know and what we don't know. I mean, we saw this, guys. We saw this yesterday at uh, at uh, Rudy's apartment. We've also seen them uh, seize electronic devices from lawyer Victoria Tenzing, who's a regular guest here on Newsmax. TV. We talked a little bit about Matt Gates. His reputation has been ruined now without any real evidence. There's no one on the record accusing him of anything that he's been accused of doing. We could also show the video of Roger Stone and the FBI raiding the house of a 74-year-old great-grandfather, fully armed, like he's a member of ISIS or something. Uh, we know the FBI had time, guys, to investigate garage door pulls at NASCAR tracks because there were accusations of racism here. And you have real questions, Andrew, about what the FBI's priorities are. Are, are they really representing all of America, or are they just working for a few folks here? Uh, you nailed it, and I think uh, both Brett and the commissioner nailed it as well. Um, they've become completely politicized. You know, one of the things in, in what you were saying there, John, that reminded me uh, of this was, uh, you know, there's so many great men and women that I worked with in the White House and in the Trump administration who are being blacklisted right now from getting a job because they worked in the White House for Donald Trump. Um, that's what we're dealing with here now, John. I mean, it, it happens in the FBI. It's, it's coming from all different levels of government. It's coming from the media. And it's because the media will put pressure on any organization, whether you're a governmental organization, whether you're a private business, that if you associate with Trump, they're going to try to do everything they can to destroy your business and destroy your life. Right. And it really, really is scary. I mean, it's, it's, it's Stalin-esque tactics here. Uh Bernie, I had the chance, and you know this, of course, better than most folks, uh, you know, you ever get the chance to talk to Rudy about his work as a U.S. attorney taking down the mafia in New York City and how careful he was during those investigations and prosecutions to avoid even the slightest appearance 
of a you know of impropriety here and what we're seeing now with what's going on is the complete opposite the FBI the J Department of Justice Merrick Garland they do not care how this looks they only care about their objective that's what's most frightening John because the FBI and the Department of Justice has turned into an arm an enforcement arm of the Democratic Party that's what's happened that's yeah. what they are today and that's what but we're Bernie, seeing. But I, I think it goes bigger. It's bigger than that. It's not just the Democratic Party. It's the Uniparty. It's the the swamp. It's the establishment, the deep state, the military industrial uh, intelligence complex that has metastasized over the last 15, 20 years. And think about it, John. That's exactly what everything you just said is exactly why they despise Donald Trump, because Donald Trump was against the swamp. Period. Whether it was military, justice, the Congress, Senate, didn't make any difference. Donald Trump was against the swamp, and that's why they loathe him. Loathe him. Mm. Yeah, Brett. Let's f focus on this next. On what's coming next, I should say. What do you anticipate now? Uh, how is Mayor Giuliani protecting himself? What does he need to do in terms of his legal defense team? What's coming next? Well, first of all, if uh, if anyone out there is afraid the FBI is coming after them, perhaps, and, and they have a search warrant, just tell them that, that, that what they're looking for is evidence of the Biden corruption or Biden crimes, and apparently the FBI won't care about it. Um, it, it it's aggravating to me to see inconsistency. And right mm -hmm. now, Mayor Giuliani, he knows what he has to do. He'll have good lawyers. They'll make sure that their communications um, with the government are very careful and very strategic. He's a target for sure now. They've identified that. But frankly, what I've heard uh, in terms of what the scope of this investigation may be, it, they'll be hard pressed um, if, far, if, if his registra registering as a lobbyist, for example, and contacts with foreign governments is the basis for this, this um, investigation. You can go back over the last uh, several decades, and um, there are multiple people that could be at risk of this. He's going to have, um, you know, he's going to have the ability to defend himself. And in the end, unless they have something else, there's there's not, uh, you know, there's not a pot of gold for the Department of Justice on a prosecution like this. It's the process and the right. ability to use this politically that they're going to be capitalizing on. They're hoping that the ends justify the means here. Uh, Andrew, last word to you. How is your dad holding up? He's good. He's so resilient. And Bernie knows this just as well. Right. I mean, he's a tough guy. Bernie, you had to work for him. I never had to work for him. So, I mean, God bless you. But he's a tough, tough guy. I mean, look, when the mafia puts a contract on you, when uh, when you get through September 11th, when you've been through everything that he has been representing the president over the last four years, you develop thick skin. Uh, he's as tenacious and resilient of a fighter as I've ever seen. And his spirit is is absolutely great. I actually probably think Bernie's probably seen him since I've seen him, as the last time I saw him was was yesterday evening. And I know Bernie was with him last night. So uh, Bernie can speak to that. But uh, God bless you, Bernie. I never had to work for him because he's tough, I'll tell you that. But he's on a loving father, too. All right, gentlemen, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. We'll check all, back in with all you on all these angles. Bernie's actually going to stick around with us. We're going to talk a little bit more about the situation in North Carolina and the police attrition we're seeing across the country as well. Our thanks to Andrew Giuliani and Brett Tillman. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.